Hello, AP Calculus. AB students, Mr. Record here, and video number three, dealing with derivatives of inverse. How's that? Does that look like my emoji down there? Maybe not. But anyhow, we are going to look at our last example that illustrates this method two that I introduced in my last video. And I really encourage you, if you haven't watched example two, to probably watch that prior to this one because I'm going to refer back to a series of steps that you want to use in order to progress through this problem. But by and large, it's really the same type of problem that we did in the example two with just a few other uh, different pieces um, in the actual um, function. And so you're going to see that immediately when you look at example three here. Find the derivative of the inverse uh, function of f of x equal e to the x plus ln of x at x equal three. So as I said, you've got some interesting components there with the exponential and the logarithmic. You want to take a very special note that this is a calculator active problem. Uh, because of the complexity that involves solving for this y value that's going to happen. So let's jump right into it. So the very first thing that you're going to do for step one, if you recall, is to switch your x and your y. So we're going to call the f of x x, and we're going to call the x's y's. And really, by and large, you now have an inverse of your original function right here. This is going to be the inverse. So our job is to not just take this inverse. That's an algebra thing to do. Notice that we can't solve for y in this equation very effectively. That's why we're using method two, which is using implicit derivative work to proceed from this point. So we're going to go ahead and use uh, step two, which is take the derivative of this with respect to x. I'm just going to go ahead and do that derivative for you without having to set it up like I did in the last video. So the derivative of x, of course, is one with respect to x. Now the derivative of e to the y, well, under normal circumstances, we would, of course, get e to the y. But because we're differentiating with respect to x, you're going to multiply that by the dy over dx. All right, just your typical implicit derivative approach here. Now you'll add, and then the derivative of natural log of y is 1 over y. And once again, you will multiply that by dy over dx. And you've got yourself a derivative there. Now, if you recall, step three from our earlier video mentioned that you're going to isolate the dy over dx uh, term. So that means you're going to have to, first of all, factor it out, which I told you before that many of you uh, that feel comfortable might go ahead and do this in one step instead of the two steps that I'm going to show. So there's our dy over dx factored out, hopefully correctly. And then if I divide this expression e to the y plus 1 over y over to the left, I'll have my result. Now I'm going to also, with your permission or without your permission, I'm going to get the dy dx on the left side uh, just because I kind of like it there. It looks a little bit better over there. And so I have e to the y plus 1 over y here in the denominator. And as I said before, we can actually call this dy dx a very special name. We can call him the inverse function's derivative. And we can even use the, note, the notation of x, even though it seems kind of strange because this expression that we have here is certainly in terms of y, but that's okay. When we plug in an x, we're going to be careful as to what value we actually are using for the y. And that takes us to the next step, step four. It's the one that sometimes bothers students the most often. And what you're going to do in step four is you're going to use your step one equation. Remember, this guy is the inverse. We're evaluating this inverse's derivative when x is 3. So I think of it this way. We're in the world of the inverse, right? When this question says find the derivative of the inverse function, boom, you're in the world of the inverse. So this value x is an x value for that inverse. And that's exactly what we have with that blue expression or that blue equation. So I'm going to replace the x with a 3. And I have this equation right here that we just need to solve for y. 
And that's where the calculator is going to come into play. Notice this was a calculator active question, and that reason is predominantly because of the equation that we've arrived at right here. This is a pretty difficult equation to solve by hand. Sometimes you're going to see equations that do not have a calculator active uh, uh, Oh, uh, the icon next to it and that means that you can actually solve it another way and I've got a couple of those videos coming up here in just a little bit so let's switch over to our trusty calculator and solve this equation so here we go and if you remember from before I am going to use a CAS calculator the TI Inspire uh, CX2 CAS to do this uh, algebra solve I'm going to type in my equation which I believe was 3 is equal to e to the and I can use the variable y in this instance e to the y plus and the natural log second e uh, to the x and then I've got my natural log of y and then I'll tell the calculator that yes I would like to solve this equation for y and boom I get an answer of 1.0744 now sometimes you get this little moniker here that says hey more solutions may exist etc I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about why that's here it's just sort of a way that the calculator can can let us know that sometimes it doesn't know all the answers but we are going to be okay with the solution you'll see why here in a little bit now for those of you that might be watching this and like what I don't have that calculator you can easily type this into any graphing calculator into Desmos and find the zero as long as you're able to manipulate this equation and set uh, it equal to zero so you would just simply subtract that three over to the right and solve so let's take a look and see what that brings us and of course, remember, we're hoping to get this answer of 1.074. So if I switch over to the graphing mode, I've already taken the liberty of sketching that function. Remember, I'm going to change all the Y's to X's because that's the way that your calculator is going to need the input. And then there you go. I've subtracted that 3 over. So essentially, I'm letting this Y value be 0, which is just any value along the X axis. And whoa, lo and behold, I see one right there. Looks like it's going to be about 1.07. Let's find out. I'll use analyze graph and zero, and then lower bound on to the left, slide it over, and boom, lo and behold, we've got our answer. And I can get my extra decimal points if I want to. So I'm going to report this answer as 1.074. So we've got our solution by the calculator of y is approximately 1.074. And I think I might, I'm going to switch over just really quickly to my other screen. It may not be intact, but I want to get that other decimal of uh, four there. That way I'm using four decimal places to be a little bit more accurate. But as I said before, it's not going to make a big difference because we're going to use the calculator to evaluate. Now, the next thing that we need to do is um, use our derivative that we found here in the, in the lower left-hand corner to actually figure out what the, the result is. So that's our step five here. And so we're going to say, hey, let's find this derivative of this inverse. So f inverse prime when x is 3. And you want to make sure that we understand to not plug 3 in for the y. That would defeat the whole purpose. We wanted to plug in this 1.074 for value. So we have e to the 1.0744 power. I bet that's pretty. Add 1 over 1.0744. And of course, we're going to use the calculator to get us out of this little mess. So let's return to the TI Inspire and see what it gives us. So like we always do we're going to enter this fraction 1 over e to the y plus the natural uh, I'm sorry plus 1 over y I believe it was I want to make sure that I have the right expression and we're going to evaluate this such that control equal with the such that bar and we're going to say that y is equal to this decimal but we're going to round it to many more places to be even more accurate with it and we're going to get a final answer of 0.259 and we can stop right there uh, to report the decimals so let's go ahead and um, go back to the document to report that and we end up with 0. 259 I believe was our final answer and that would take care of the problem we've done everything that the question has addressed now I'm going to give you a little bonus 
footage here with this video. We've solved the problem, but I'd like to stick around for just a couple, a minute, minute and a half maybe, because I want to sketch this graph of this inverse and, and see if we've accomplished what we set out to do. So one last time, return to the calculator. And here we go. We are going to enter uh, that original graph here. So let me go to a document and I'm going to use a graphing page. And while we didn't really need to, to, to say, throw this particular equation or this function in, I'm going to go ahead and do it nonetheless. If you recall, this was the original graph, uh, the original function that we were going to be taking the inverse of, right? Not real exciting there, right? But then if we go ahead and we find his inverse, which we can do a variety of ways on the Inspire, one way that I like to do is to switch it to a relation and then just physically change the x and the y and end up with x equal e to the y plus the natural log of y. This is pretty much the first line of the solution that we wrote back into the document. And then there's what our inverse looks like. I'm going to go ahead and change his color just to give it a little bit of variation between what we had already uh, found. Notice that the blue graph is one-to-one. -one. It's strictly monotonic, means it's uh, in this case, it's always increasing, so that means that our inverse is certainly going to exist. And then what I'm going to have to do is figure out what is the slope of the tangent line to this red curve when x is, I believe, 3 was that value. So to do that, I go into Menu, Geometry, Points and Lines, and choose our awesome option, Tangent, select that red line, and then see if I can just get this guy to be somewhere right around where x is 3. Looks like I've done a pretty good job of that. I can even extend, um, if I wanted to, I, I could extend these uh, these arrows here if I, if I so chose. But I think you get the idea that that is a tangent line. But I want you to take a look at the slope, 0.26 looks awfully close to 0.259 to me. And in this particular instance, I'd have to go into some other settings if I wanted to get more decimal places, but I'm going to trust that that is the slope of the tangent line that I wanted to compute there. Anyway, I hope this helps out. We're going to move into another type of method in with our uh, next two examples. And I really want you to pay very close attention to those because those are the two most powerful examples. And very likely, they are also going to be a little bit more indicative of what you could see on the AP exam. All right, thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.